Equivalence is a really important concept in logic. When we've got two sentences and they're equivalent to one another, basically logic doesn't tell them apart. And that allows us to do some interesting things with those sentences. Okay, let's see how that goes. Hello everyone, welcome to Attic Philosophy. We are doing a series of videos introducing the basic concepts of logic and this video is going to be on equivalence. Before you watch this one, make sure you've watched the previous video which defines entailment. That's going to be important to our understanding equivalence. We're going to look at equivalence in two parts. In this video, we're going to take a look at what equivalence is and how we check for it using truth tables. And then in the next video, we're going to look at some equivalent schemes. That is schemes that keep coming up where we have two sentences which are guaranteed to be equivalent to one another. And then later on in the series, we're going to see how to use those equivalent schemes to rewrite sentences in interesting ways. So if you're finding this series of videos useful, why not subscribe to the channel, hit the bell icon to get updates. Because we've already defined entailment, it's really easy for us to now define equivalence. It's simply two-way entailment. So when we have two sentences, A and B, they are equivalent just in case A entails B and also B entails A. It's good to have a symbol as a shorthand for writing down that A and B are equivalent. Some logicians use this symbol, the three bars. You see that in maths quite a bit to say that A and B are equivalent sentences. I'm not going to use that one. I'm going to use the symbol that we've already got. So we've got this one for saying that A entails B and I'm going to write it backwards to say that A and B are equivalent. OK, because it's like A entails B and B entails A. That's what we've got going on here. So I'm using the entailment symbol forwards and backwards to denote equivalence. How would we use a truth table to work out whether A and B are equivalent? Well, we could just use the definition we've got and go the long way around and first of all, see if A entails B and then see if B entails A. But actually, there's a much shorter way. All we need to do is check whether A and B have matching columns. Logical equivalence means that the truth table for A is exactly the same as the truth table for B. OK, so in every line, if there's a T for A, there's got to be a T for B. And if there's an F for A, there's got to be an F for B. Matching columns for A and B. That's what logical equivalence looks like in a truth table. Let's look at an example. Suppose we want to work out whether this sentence is logically equivalent to this sentence and we're going to do it using a truth table. How are we going to do that? First up, we're going to write both sentences down at the top of a truth table. There's three primitive sentences there, P, Q and R. So we're going to write eight lines in this truth table. And remember, start column by column on the right going TF, 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 TF. Then do the middle column going TT, FF, TT, FF. And then the leftmost column going TT, TT, F, 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 F. That way you won't miss any out. We're then going to work through these sentences subsentence by subsentence. Let's start here, Q or R. So there we're looking at whether there's a T in either the R column or the Q column. So that is going to look like this. Then we're looking at this whole sentence. That's an and. So we're looking at whether we have a T in both the P column and the one we've just done. Now notice that the P column goes T, 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 F, 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 F. And since we're looking for a T in both columns, we kind of only need to look at the top four lines. So we look at the top four lines. Where have we got a T? It goes the first three lines. The rest of them are going to be Fs like this. So three T's and then five F's. Now let's move over to the second sentence. Again, we're going to go sub sentence by sub sentence. P and Q. Again, we're looking for a T in both of those columns. And again, we know there's only going to be a T in the first four lines. And for Q, it's just the first two lines. So we're going to get two T's followed by six F's. P and R. So we're looking for 
a T here and here. And again, it's just those first four lines that we really care about because those are the only T's for the P. So we're going to get a T in the first line and the third line. The rest of them are going to be F's. Then let's look at this whole sentence. It's an OR. So we're looking at the two columns we've just done. Where do I have a T in one or other of them? So it's the first line, the second line, the third line, and the rest of them are going to be F's. So we've done an individual truth table for this sentence and an individual truth table for that sentence. Now we want to compare them. So we're going to be comparing this column and this column. So be really careful here. Remember the order in which you've worked through these different columns. We did this one first. That's like our working. But here is our answer to this sentence. And similarly, over on the right hand side, this and this was our working. But this is our final answer for this sentence. So it's these two columns here that we want to be comparing. And then we just say, well, are they the same? Check line by line. It goes T, T, T there, T, T, T there. And the rest of it's an F. It's the same column for both sentences. So those sentences are equivalent. That is most of what we need to know about equivalence. We've looked at the definition two-way entailment, and we've looked at what equivalence looks like in a truth table. So we can always check for any two sentences whether they're equivalent or not. OK, so that's that's the basics. That's most of what we need to know. However, there are some equivalences that keep cropping up, OK, some patterns that keep recurring. I think it's a good idea to learn some or all of the equivalences I'm about to show you because they're going to be really useful in what follows. And if you learn them by heart, it means you don't have to keep working them out from scratch. I'm going to show you a big long list of equivalences, first of all involving AND and OR, conjunction and disjunction, then some involving negation, then some involving IF THEN, and then a few involving IF and ONLY IF. OK, so that is equivalence. In the next video, we are going to look at some equivalence schemes. That is general patterns where we've got two sentences and they're always guaranteed to be equivalent. And we're going to see how we can use those to do some interesting things with the form of sentences. OK, so I hope you found this video interesting and useful. If you're enjoying them, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell icon to get updates. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I'll see you guys next time.